with GDP, what we're trying to get at is a level of national production, but there are an awful lot of things that are not counted in GDP. So I'm going to go through some of that stuff real quick. What does it not measure? The key here is to understand that GDP is a quantitative measure. Quantitative. That means that we can put a dollar amount on it. For a lot of the stuff that is not counted in GDP, a lot of those things end up being qualitative. Whoops. Lost some letters in there. Because we can't really measure them in terms of a dollar cost. Now, one of the first things that we have to look at here would be kind of the big umbrella of like non-productive transactions perhaps, but in terms of, you know, being specific about what's not measured, we can say non-market activities. non-market activities. The value, for example, of a stay-at-home parent, that's non-market because their labor, the services they provide, do not have a dollar amount assigned to them. It's not something that goes into a person's income tax, the value of labor for which they don't get paid. So that's one thing. Another aspect of economic activity that's not included is anything that is illegal. Because again, we can't really put a dollar amount on that if it's something that is non-reported. We don't know about it, it didn't happen, it's not in there, you're not supposed to do it anyway, doesn't count. Another thing that's not in here would be changes and I'm going to throw a few things together and just say quality of life. Quality of life. For example, if we are increasing our GDP at an exponential rate and we have runaway economic growth, but we do it at the expense of the environment, then that's not necessarily an overall positive thing. It's not measured in here. Another thing here, if we're looking at quality of life, and this is a positive, would be quality improvements in the products themselves. Now, we see this all the time with technology. Processors are getting faster and faster, which means that while the computers perhaps are getting cheaper, maybe they're better, and does that mean that we're actually losing something? You know, what are we netting out from that? What are we left with? We're left with something that is a better product that we pay less for, which means it's going to contribute less to the GDP, and yet it's going to raise our overall level of satisfaction. That kind of calculation doesn't play into the GDP formula, and yet it's something that has an impact on people's lives. Something else that's not in here, and we looked at an example like this the other day, talking about per capita GDP. If you're looking at a per capita calculation, then that's the total GDP divided by the number of people in a country. But that doesn't mean that every person in the country has that amount of the GDP or everyone has the same piece of the pie if you were to divide it up absolutely equally. It doesn't tell you anything about distribution. We can say distribution of money. We can say distribution and access to products or access to services. So, 
You may have a country with a very high GDP <coughs> where the vast majority of its citizens live in abject poverty, don't go to schools, don't have access to hospital care, and is the number calculation the most important thing? Well, it is if you're only interested in the number. Now, with all of these kind of qualitative aspects here, it is worth taking into consideration if you're interested in trying to evaluate a standard of living. But because it's hard to assign a dollar amount to a level of utility that you get from something that is a better product that was cheaper to produce and cheaper to buy, we can't really do that. So again, GDP is quantitative, it's not qualitative. Now what does a higher GDP imply? It implies that the country is more capable of providing things like better medical care, but it doesn't imply anything about the distribution of it. It implies better opportunity, but it's not a guarantee. So the numbers will only take us so far, and yet they are the best benchmarks we have to compare where we are today to where we've been and to compare where we are today to where other countries are. It's easier to use than this.